Hello, this is David Vallade with AltaVista Technology, and today I was going to do a little demo where I'm going to show how I can create a report in under 15 minutes for SQL reporting services. So let's get started. So what I have here is a Dynamics GP up and running, and I have my home page, and you can see I have this thing I love called Business Analyzer. And why don't I make that a little bit bigger here? I'll expand it. And what you can see here is this is the technology underneath this is called SQL reporting services. Yeah, and when you run Dynamics GP, you can deploy a whole list of reports. And I love these reports. I think they're great. And it's a great place for you to make your own. So here I can uh, actually go and view the report to get a little bit more information. And what happens here is I can run this report. Now I can see it here in a web browser. And it's pretty, it's colorful. It looks good in a boardroom. And I can even take this and I can interact with it because I'm running it in the browser. So I can see some information and maybe I click on the state of Minnesota here. I can see all my Minnesota information and I can see if you look, it's a little subtle, but I can click on these uh, little up down uh, sorters. So I can sort sales year to date in this case from low to high or high to low, or maybe by customer name or number or city, whatever I feel like doing. And I even have little hyperlinks here so that I can click on a customer number and that will open up the customer number right within GP. So this is all great. So what if you want to make your own? How do you do it? That's what we're going to do here today. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just in my folder here and I have a lot of crazy names in my demo environment, but I have all my reports deployed and I have uh, an option on my toolbar in SQL reporting services to go into something called Report Builder. So I'm going to do that right now. And as it loads, I get a little wizard, which I like. So this wizard is asking me a lot of different things. It's asking me, do I want to make a new report and a few other things, uh, like opening an existing report, for example. But yeah, new report, that's something I do want to do. And what kind of report do I want to do? Well, I can pick a table or a matrix. And that's what I'm going to do right now. They had a couple other options there as far as making a, a map data report, or a graphical report or chart, but I'm gonna keep it pretty easy for this. I just wanna get a list of information. Let's say I wanna get a list of customers actually. So I need to define my data set. I don't, I don't have a data set yet, I need to make one. So I'm gonna say create a data set and follow along with my wizard and say next. Now, because I've been in here before, I have a few options for my data source connections, but your first time in, you may not. So what you can do is you can go out and browse and if you've already deployed Dynamics GP, you'll have a data sources folder, and you can go into that and you can pick uh, one of your data sources that you have there and use that. I'm gonna hit cancel because I already picked one and I actually have uh, a system one, which is used for my Dynamics database and then a company name one. I have a crazy company name here in my, in my environment. Let me test that connection and it is successful. So I like that connection. So I'm gonna move on. I hit next. And now it gets interesting here. I have to pick the tables, SQL tables, SQL views, or store procedures, or table value functions that I'm going to use in my report. Now we have a list in our blog post of uh, some of the, uh, what we call the user-friendly views that you can use for building your report. Unfortunately, if I go into views, I get to see some of the things that I think are very user-friendly kind of co-mingled with some things that are not so user-friendly. For example, AAG, I think that's a zero, 200, FL. Like these are not very simple to understand views for a lot of users, but uh, or even, even savvy pro developer type people have a hard time with that. But something like customers, ah, that's something I can understand. So I'm gonna expand that. And even the columns here make a lot of sense to me too. I can see customer number, name, and so on. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna pick customer number. And as I click on these, you can see the fields show up in the left. I'm sorry. <laughs> And the fields show up in the right in the selected fields. So I pick my number, pick my name. And if I didn't like the order here, I do have the ability to move things up or down. But I actually do like the customer number up on top. That looks good. And let's just pick a few address things. So I'm going to pick these guys right here. City, state, zip. Looks good. And what I like about these user friendly views that are here is if I scroll all the way down to the very end of the field list for the view, and this is true for all, uh, almost all the, the views that are there, not just customers, I get these little things. It's a little hard to see here, but if I scroll over, you'll see, starting right here, accounts receivable, account number for drillback. 
number for drillback, and so on. They all end in the phrase for drillback. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but just go with me for a moment. I'm going to select this customer number for drillback, and I'll explain why momentarily. I could also add some filters here. So if I just wanted the report to be able to pull in customers from a certain city or state, I could do that, or a certain range of customers based on ID, I could do that. But again, keeping things simple, trying to stay under my time schedule here, I'm going to just hit next. So there's my fields. I get a lot more things I can do here. I know this wizard is taking us in a lot of places, but this is good. I have the ability here to do grouping. So if I wanted to be able to group, let's say, a list of invoices by customer and then total them up, in that case, it'd be grouping by customers. Well, I just want all the information in one spot, so I'm just going to pull in all the values. That's it. No grouping at all, nice and easy, and we're just going to keep going. This option gives me uh, a few things I can pick to how for how I want the report to be laid out. You'll notice they're all grayed out for me, and that's because I didn't pick any groupings on the prior step, so I don't have to pick where I want subtotals to be placed, if it should be blocked or stepped, if there should be like an expansion where I can uh, collapse or, or expand uh, details within a customer in my example. Um, I don't have those choices because I just had a simple list, so I'm going to be able to move on. But you can see why this would be very important if I were making a different kind of report. Here I get to pick from a few styles. Now I can always change this later, but uh, Reporting Services does a neat little job of giving me uh, a couple different options to choose from. Huh, that looks good. I'm going to try that. Mahogany, I guess, is what I'm picking for this layout. And there we go. So the report has done a few things here. It's added all the fields that I care about. And I get to do a few more things. Like, for example, I want to give this report a title. So I'll do that. This is uh, Alta Vista Technology Customer List. Looks great. All right. And you can see here I have the customer, so on, so on, all the fields I put, I picked here a minute ago. And I do have, it's a little, little short here, but that customer number for drillback, which is a little crazy still. So. What's neat here is I can click the Run button and see what I get. Okay, so let's see. Well, this is neat. I have information. I, I really have a report now in under 10 minutes for sure. But we're going to make it a little bit uh, fancier. I wanted to talk about a few things. First off, like customer number. Eh, you know, I need to make that a little wider, I think. Customer name, it did wrap it so I can see it all. I think I'll make that a little wider as well. Um, everything else looks not so bad. But this drillback, what is that all about? Well, let me explain that here. Um, instead of when you go to the internet, you can go to HTTP colon slash slash and then some internet address. Uh, here, there's a protocol when Dynamics GP is installed on your workstation, where if you go to DGPP colon slash slash and then a big long string, and I can pick out different bits in here. I can see there's a customer number buried in here, and I know my server name's in there as well, and a few other actions. This is a URL, more or less, so that if I were to be click on a on something, uh, or if I were to activate this URL, I guess by some means, uh, I would um, be able to go right into GP if I'm logged in, and go right to that window. In this case, for Aaron Fitz, or in this case for Adam Park, which I think is pretty cool. So what I can do here is I can go back to design, right back to where I was, scroll over to the right. And I decide, you know, I don't want to show the, this uh, customer number here. I want it to be available. So I'm just going to come here and delete it. It's still there in the report. It still lives. If I go back into my data sets off to the left here, I still see it's there for me to use elsewhere. I can drag it right back into the report if I feel like it. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to skinny up my report. And I got my information. And oh, yeah, that's right. My customer number was a little chopped. So I'll make that a little bit wider. The customer name, that same thing there. I'll make that a little bit bigger still. It's looking a little better. Um, now I want to be able to do that link. So I'm going to click on customer number here. And by default, this is not turned on. But if I go to the view area up in my ribbon, I can enable properties. So whatever I'm clicked on, whether it's a, the report itself or a field, I can see the properties of that thing. And the one property I care about here is customer number, the action. So right now there's no action, meaning when I click on that, uh, when I'm in the browser, nothing will happen. But I have some choices here. If I click my little ellipse, I can have it go to another report. 
So this is how they, in that example I did at the beginning where I had a map and I clicked on a state and I was able to see the detail. What was happening there is I was actually, I was actually jumping from one, one report to another. In this case, I'm going to go to a URL. Okay, well, what URL? Ah, remember that DGPP thing we saw, that customer number for Drillback? Yeah, that's my URL. And the system already has it for me, so I have that. I just assign it. I say OK. So now the action on the customer number is to go to a URL, and I have that all mapped. Now the other thing I want to do here, though, is um, I want to go back up to the home of my ribbon here because I want this to look like a link, and right now it doesn't. It's not formatted any differently from anything else. So what I can do here is go into the font, and I can change the color of the font to be a blue, which is a kind of a customary internet hyperlink color. And the effects, typically links, more often than not, are underlined. So I want to follow that convention. I see a little sample there. That looks great. I say OK. And let's run it and see what we get. Nice. So here's my, my link. I can click on my Aaron Fitz. I open it in GP. I get my name and so on. I want to do a couple more fancy things here. I'm not done. So I'm going to come in here and I want to be able to allow the user to pick one or more customer numbers and be able to uh, see just the ones they care about. This gets into a kind of a complicated idea, but it's the idea of a parameter. So I'm going to make one here. So what I do here is I right click on the parameter folder. I'm going to add a parameter. And I have to give the parameter a name. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, cust. Looks good for me. The prompt, that's what the user's going to see when they run the report. So I'm going to say cust uh, customer name, actually, not number. And I'm going to allow the user to provide multiple values. Now you'll see what that means in a minute. Available values. Now, do I want the user to just type in text? That would work, but not so fun. Uh, better yet would be to give them a list of available values. Where am I going to get that list? How about I get it from that very same data set I used a minute ago? So I'm going to go down and go to my data set, which I have right there. The value field, uh, I want that to be the customer number because that's a unique number. I like that. Uh, but I want the user to see the label. The label they're going to see is the customer name. It could be the same. In this case, I'm going to make them different to be fun. And then a default value, I could pick one. Uh, I'm not going to in this case. I'm going to let the user pick. And I'll say OK. All right, so now I have a parameter here. So now I need to do something with the parameter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my grid. So that means I'm just going to click on basically like a table, if you think of it that way. I'm going to right click on this, and there's something called a tablex property. Crazy sounding name, but I'm going to go in anyway. And this is where I can do things like sorting, if I wanted to sort that by state or something like that, controlling page breaks and so on. But filters looks interesting to me, so let me do that. So I'm going to add a filter, and I can add several, but just one for me. Where my expression, I get to build a little formula. Not too bad. I want to say expression where the customer number is in a list of values. And what are the values? Well, it's that parameter, right? So I don't see my parameter. It's not a drop down, but I have this little function where I can pick. And this looks a little confusing, takes a little bit of getting used to, but I can find in the list here all my parameters. And there's that cust one I made a second ago. So I just double clicked on it and it added it up here in my value. And I could add other things here too. Now, one thing that reporting services did is it was smart enough to know that this is a list because I have multiple values. So put a little zero in parentheses at the end, which is basically saying like, take the first record or the zero, you know, whatever is uh, at the top of the list and show that. But that's not what I want. Reporting services is trying to help me, but I want the full list. So I'm just going to take out that little bit at the end and say OK. And say OK. And now let's run it. Ah, now it's prompting me for a customer name. I hit my drop down and I can see my list of customers. So when I pick a few, I'll pick Aaron Fitz again. And how about Alton, Alton, I guess, Alton Manufacturing. And I'll hit View Report. And I got my two. That's great. Well, just a few seconds left for me to come in here into the design and hit File, Save As. And I can just put that in the folder online that I want it to go in. And I'm going to call this, let's see, Alta Vista Customers. 
And I'll put that in the sales folder, I guess, and save. So now when I come back over here and go into sales, and I've done it, guys, I have a report. And go in here and run it. And it looks just like I had seen a moment ago. So that's it, guys. I appreciate all the, the attention. And please visit our website if you want more resources and more information about using SQL reporting services or GP in general. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you all soon.